out there and we start to dig in and investigate. And we started looking around the WPPI site. This guy, Sean LeBlanc, came up and we immediately went to his website. And no kidding, we thought this work was brilliant. So we want to invite him to speak here at the Nikon stage. He is a tremendous photographer. So for the first time here with Nikon, ladies and gentlemen, Sean LeBlanc. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, brother. Awesome. Yeah, how's it going? Nice to see everyone. So my name's Sean LeBlanc, and I'm a wedding and portrait photographer from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I live with my beautiful wife and my two young boys. So I got my first camera 10 years ago on a mountain biking trip to Moab, Utah. And to be honest, I did very little mountain biking and a lot of shooting and a lot of playing around with my camera. And it was really at that point that I developed a love for photography and, and a real strong passion for it. From there, I started to photograph families, which eventually led to weddings. I started to enter some competitions, some wedding competitions. Started to do well with those and got into destination wedding photography. And I was doing this all the while. I was an engineer uh, working at a large energy company. So I used to work in wind power and I'd often take my, my camera out with me to take photos of the wind projects. But then in 2016, I had the opportunity to photograph a destination, in, a, a destination wedding in Japan. Incredible opportunity but I almost missed it because of my corporate world commitments. And so it was really at that point that I started to consider becoming a full-time uh, photographer. So eventually, two years ago, I took the leap of faith. This is me moments before walking down the hallway to my boss's office to hand in my letter of resignation, one of my favorite photos. And I, so in Calgary, I live on two acres, and I built a, a studio out there. So this is me opening my studio. And that's where I offer um, wedding photography. I do a lot of portrait work as well. So I work with pets, uh, lots of families, boudoir. And everything's kind of centered on creating beautiful printed work for our clients. Uh, I also mentor photographers and offer workshops throughout Canada and the US. And I've also started working with some very exclusive clientele. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a wall art collection that I created for, for a client. So this is a 22 foot uh, wall art piece. And so with this, uh, I discovered that I have a severe fear of heights when I was installing this. So I had a little scissor lift there and uh, it, it was a little bit sketchy, but I got it done. But I'm here to talk to you about the art of creating bold and dramatic wedding portraits. And I hope that I can offer some tips and tricks uh, that you'll be able to use next time you find yourself uh, shooting, shooting wedding portraits. Clean background. So this is the first thing that I look for when photographing portraits. So where can I put my clients on a clean background? So often that involves getting low and shooting up. So in this case, I have my clients walking together just along a ridge, very simple, but you can see there's very little distraction there. So they stand out really cleanly on the frame. Here as well, so now I'm using a longer lens to shoot across a valley and I have my clients again on that clean background you can see, so they really stand out in the frame. Here as well, now my camera is just along the water, shooting up. Again, just having my clients walk along that ridge there so I can get them on a clean background. But that background doesn't always have to be on sky. So in this case, I found a higher vantage point and I'm shooting down and I'm actually using that lake as that clean background. So now that I've thought about clean backgrounds, I think about how can I creatively frame my clients. And so often I'll use architectural elements that, that I find. So in this case, this is just the, um, the steel beams from the bridge, so using that to frame them. 
Uh, this was from a wedding I shot in Spain, so using a bit of a wider lens, a wider Nikon lens, to bring in some of that beautiful brickwork from the castle, uh, and, and using the, uh, the iron cast doorway as a frame. Looking for natural vegetation. So this is, this is just hanging leaves, overhanging leaves uh, that I used from a tree uh, to frame my clients. Again, you see on a clean background, so they're really standing out in the frame. So now that I've thought of clean backgrounds, I've thought about how to creatively frame them, I think about how can I draw the viewer's eye to where I want it to go in the photograph. So for that, I use leading lines. So in this case, using the architecture, the beautiful architecture, this is from Calgary, to go from left to right. And you can see it's got that mixture of opposing primary colors as well. So you've got the the very warm tones on the left side mixed with the cool tones on the right. And as you can see, now I'm starting to layer techniques. So when you start to layer those techniques, that's really when you start to get a bold and dramatic portrait. Here as well, so using the, um, the staircase, so the, the rods from the stairs as a way to lead the lines towards my clients. So our eyes are attracted to angles and triangles. So now that I've thought of clean backgrounds, creative framing, how to draw the eye, now I start looking for triangles. So in this case, this is a photo from um, the Rocky Mountains, not far from where I live. And uh, so here you can see we've got four triangles. The mountain in the foreground, the mountain on the right, the sky, as well as the bride's, ve the bride's uh, veil. In this case here, this actually took about 100 photos or so to get everything lined up. Um, so I'm using a bit of a wider lens as well, a 35 mil. And uh, so I just had the bride's dad lead this, this horse back and forth while I shot um, quite a few frames. And I got everything to line up so that you can see those triangles. So there's three triangles there. Silhouettes, so I love silhouettes, and they're really easy to photograph. Really, all you need to look for is a bright area that you can, uh, can expose for, and therefore create a silhouette. So I wish I had a BTS shot of this photograph, because this was actually taken in a very busy parking lot. Cars everywhere, people everywhere. And I just had my client stand on a picnic table and shot up towards them. So you can see that clean background I exposed for the bright area. That brought the exposure of my camera down, and you get that beautiful silhouette. Here, the same kind of thing. You can see the veil getting a bit of that triangle effect there. This I want to point out is the Nikon 200 F2, my absolute favorite lens. It is incredibly sharp. The colors are just absolutely beautiful. And when you bring that out, your, your client knows you mean business because it's quite big. So it's, uh, it's, it's one of my favorite lenses that I like to use. Here as well, so just, just a bright cloud in the sky. I saw the bright cloud, I immediately thought silhouette. And you know, a few things to note here. So you want to keep a bit of distance between your clients. You don't want them touching when you're trying to do that silhouette because when you do that, you, you start to get that blob look. So I wanted to keep a bit of separation there, and then I just brought up her finger just to add that, that little extra element there. Here, now incorporating the bridal party. So there's triangles all over the place in this photograph. And you know, I, I really I wanted to take the time to get it right as well. So I wanted to, so I'm positioning the flowers away from the body. I'm creating triangles with their legs watching the elbows away from the body there, having them side profile as well, so you're getting that beautiful profile of their face. So here, now we're incorporating a lot of those techniques as well. So you see leading lines, opposing primary colors, clean background, framed. So this is actually from the new library in, uh, in Calgary. So often on a wedding day, you don't have a lot of time. The light's horrible. You know, the bridal party's getting anxious, wants to do something. 
and you're forced to make these creative portraits. So what do you do? So I will always go through this to get the creative juices going. So I get high, I get low, I get far, I get close. I start to think about where can I get high, where can I get low, where can I get far, where can I get close. So getting low is as simple as just lying on the ground, putting your camera right on the ground and shooting up. So here using a bit of a wider lens, you can see the culvert creates a frame. There's that clean background again. You've got that beautiful water light. So as Jerry Guionis was talking about, looking at light as water, and you get a beautiful portrait. Here using a longer lens and shooting up. So here I'm using the Nikon 70 to 200. Again, there's that clean background and just bringing in some of the beautiful mountains in, in the Rockies. Get high. So this, this was a very complicated shot to set up. It took quite a while because this is actually a very busy road. So I had to wait for, client, or for cars to stop uh, driving so that my clients could, could walk through it. So it was taken from the 14th floor of a hotel. But here I'm just bringing in some of the, the, those beautiful elements of the city and creating more of a, a dramatic portrait for my clients. Here as well, just shooting down. So again, you see that clean background and just bringing in some of the beautiful, beautiful forestry there. But you can also look for places, you know, just simple ledges. And so now I've just taken the veil, brought it over the bride and groom, found that high vantage point, used a longer lens. So now I'm using my 85, my Nikon 85 millimeter and creating that. Getting far. So I, I love to create environmental portraits. So anytime you can bring in the beauty of the surrounding of where your couple is getting married, they'll love you for it. So here, using the, the, um, the tree to, to fill the frame. And again, there's that clean background again, and all they're doing is just walking down the, the hill. Here as well, I actually used an off-camera flash to light the bride and groom here. So for this one, I was on, um, it was, I don't know, like the 25th floor of a hotel in Banff. And so incredible distance from the bride and groom, flash on full power, and the Nikon system still worked. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was, uh, it was really cool to, to actually be able to get the, uh, my camera to communicate with the flash and, and get this portrait here. So get close. So now I'm incorporating the Nikon macro lens, so the 105. And you know, in terms of composition, being careful not to cut off fingers, right? Also showcasing the bride's beautiful engagement ring. So you can see this is an engagement portrait. So off camera flash. So when you don't have natural light available to you, that's, that's when, I'll, when I'll bring an off camera flash to create that dramatic lighting. And so I try to think of this as simple as possible because I know that off camera flash can often be quite intimidating. So these are the steps that I follow. So the first is I always shoot manual, okay? Then I expose for the ambient light. And then I underexpose by one or two stops. Okay, to bring down the, uh, the, uh, the exposure in the frame. And then I adjust my flash output. So in this case, I'm exposing for the light, bringing in my off-camera flash. So my assistant is just above with my off-camera flash coming down on the bride and groom here. And then the Nikon cameras have incredible dynamic range. So you're able to bring out a lot of that detail that you captured in post-production. So you can see here we've got opposing primary colors, lots of triangles going on. And so it creates for a very, very nice portrait. Similar here, so on a mountaintop, again, clean background, underexposed, bringing in the flash, and then cropping in. And so, you know, once you, once you learn how to use off-camera flash, you can use it in many different situations. So in this case, uh, we're in Pato Lake, Alberta, and 
I position bride and groom, again on that clean background, but that background was quite dark. And so I wanted them to pop a little bit more. So that's when off-camera flash was really useful. So all I did was ask the, the, uh, the groom to hold a flash in behind them, had it pretty much on full power because of all the ambient light that was around, and then got this portrait. Similar here, so my assistant is just hiding in behind this column, using the window as a frame there, and you can see we have lots of triangles going on here as well. So as I mentioned, I love silhouettes, and if that natural light isn't available, well, you can use your off-camera flash to create that silhouette, and it's as simple as creating a bright spot in behind your clients. So here my assistant is just crouched down behind the bride and groom, simply firing the flash at the door in behind them. The, la the light is bouncing off the door and then cre hitting the walls beside them here. And now you see those leading lines. So really easy to do. So here, so this was taken in, again, that, that's beautiful library that uh, in Calgary, they just built it. And it's got some incredible architecture, some incredible design. And so I wanted to bring in some of that design into a portrait. But it's quite busy, there's, there's quite a few people there. And so in that case, I thought a silhouette would be a neat way to showcase the architecture and, and again, showcase the, uh, uh, my bride and my couple as well. So you can see here, my assistant simply just pointing that flash in behind my clients to create that bright spot and create that silhouette. And of course, you see all the triangles now, right? Reflections. So in addition to silhouettes, I'm always looking for reflections because it's a great way to fill the frame. So in this case, this is actually a railing, so a glass railing where you're seeing the reflections of the stairs. And so in doing that, it then fills the frame. So then I've got my off-camera flash, creating even another silhouette on the wall. So again, layering those techniques so it makes for a more dramatic, more impactful portrait. Here as well, so this is actually an iPhone balanced underneath my 58 millimeter lens. So the reflection of the parking garage lights, as well as the columns here, are reflected on my iPhone underneath to create what you see here. And so again, there's lots of leading lines. You see the opposing primary colors as well. So bringing that all together creates that dramatic portrait. So I talked a little bit about layer techniques. But again, when you start to layer all of those, those pieces, that's really when you start to create those bold and dramatic portraits. And so this is as simple as shooting through 10 rows of wine glasses, OK? And so you get the, that beautiful bokeh from the 58 millimeter lens here, shot at uh, aperture 2.4 to create those beautiful bokeh balls with a strong light over top of the wine glasses. The groom is holding a flash, pointing it at the wall. And I just asked them to have a nice moment, you know? They're, they're, they just got married, so it's, it's, uh, it's really easy to ask them just to be close. Here as well, so this is actually a shower window. So the woman standing out on the deck, you can see is a silhouette because of that bright spot in behind her. And then bringing in the off-camera flash to create that, that area where the, the bride is then getting ready. So here's, but then you can bring in multiple flashes. So now all I've done is I have a flash in behind my clients here. Unfortunately, I don't have it in this BTS shot, but there's, there's another flash positioned here. So I use this flash on the floor to create that cool leading line that you see there. And then that flash here pointed at the wall, bright spot in behind. And again, because it's a silhouette, you want to be careful that arms are away from the body. And again, creating triangles and angles. And that balance of opposing primary colors. Moments. So you've got, you know, all of these techniques are great. 
but you really want to have your, your couples offer some, some beautiful moments. And there's some simple tricks to do. You know, so with this one, all I asked the bride and groom to do here was walk together with their foreheads touching, walking up a hill. And that's what they did. So it's, you, you know, you can use some of these. And then I, I was also careful to have, you know, her left hand on top so we could see her beautiful wedding ring. Um, and then here, all I said was, don't let him kiss you. And then that's what happened. Again, bright spot in behind, so you're seeing that silhouette. Here as well, so using the, um, uh, the veil to create those leading lines, and they just got married, so I just asked them to kiss each other. So, in summary, again, always be on the lookout for those clean backgrounds. Think about creative framing, leading lines. Are you seeing triangles when, when, you're, when you're composing your shots? Opposing primary colors. Think about those bright spots where you can utilize a silhouette. Off-camera flash when you don't have that, that beautiful natural light available to you. Reflections and, of course, layering all those different techniques. So I do have a workshop coming up in Charleston. It's called Evolution. You're welcome to hop on my uh, Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. It's right there. And check out uh, upcoming workshop March 16th to 19th. And it's also, also on my website as well. And it's, uh, it's been a real honor to, to stand on the stage and, and speak to you today. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean LeBlanc. All right. Awesome job, brother. Awesome job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take